Hello everybody, Conti here with another video. How to add a blinking cursor to text in DaVinci Resolve 17.2.2. The techniques that are demonstrated in this tutorial can be applied to an animation technique previously created in the how to create a text typing effect in DaVinci Resolve tutorial on this channel. A link to this video can be found in the video description box. Inside your edits window, go to effects library, underneath toolbox, select effects and go to find fusion composition. Click and drag one of these effect filters to your edits timeline. If you wish to change the duration of your blinking cursor animation, select the fusion composition clip. Holding control and press D, use command instead of control if you are a Mac user. And adjust the duration if you wish. By default this particular fusion composition clip will be playing for 5 seconds and 0 frames. Click change when you're done. Back in the edit window, right click on your fusion composition clip and go to open in fusion page. Inside your nodes panel, hold in shift and press space. To open up the select tool window, use the search box at the bottom to find the rectangle tool. Select this and go to click on add. This node will make up the shape of our final blinking cursor. In order to preview the cursor shape on your fusion window, hover the mouse cursor over the rectangle node and select either the left or right view options that appear underneath this node. With the node still selected, go to Inspector, find the cursor preview to the left and the control variables to the right. To create a style which is reminiscent of a close-up of text on a computer screen, increase soft edge slightly to 0.0175. Adjust the width and height dimensions to create a cursor appearance that you want. If you wish to change the colour of the cursor, hold in shift and press space again and go to add a background tool. Select the grey node which appears to the right of rectangle 1 and connect this to the light blue effect mask arrow which appears to the left of background 1. To preview the colour shade which will make up your cursor, Select either the left or right view options underneath background 1. Return to inspector. Underneath colour and background, choose a colour option from the first variable by double clicking in the box. And selecting an option from the colour palette. In this particular example, I will choose a light green option, which is already available in the basic colours list. The hexadecimal code for this shade will be hashtag 00FF00 if this is unavailable from your list. Click OK. Select your rectangle one node once again. Return to Inspector. Right click on the solid label to find an option called Modify With. Select this and then go to Expression. The solid box should now appear unticked and the keyframe diamond icon to the right of this variable should now be highlighted in red, with the cursor itself disappearing from screen. What we are going to do with this applied expression is to create the blinking animation. In order to access this expression, select modifiers. Under controls, you should see a list of numbers. Choose any one of these numbers. For this particular project, I'm going to choose number in five. The number that we will apply to this variable will determine how quickly the cursor blinks in our animation. The higher the number, the quicker the blinking animation will be. For this particular example, I will type in 20 into number in 5. Now go to select the second option available underneath modifiers called number out. Here you should find the number expression box. The formula that I will type in here so that the number in 5 value of 20 which I previously typed in is applied to our animation effect is sin open bracket time asterisk n5 closed bracket. The number which you type in after n towards the end of this formula will depend on which variable you selected in the controls options such as n1 for number in 1 and n2 for number in 2 etc. If I now select the play button on the Fusion Preview, we now have a blinking cursor animation. In order to have this cursor appear on your media project, ensure that the background node is connected to Media Out 1. If you do not have text available in your project and wish to add this to see how the cursor looks for this particular project, 
Ensure that your existing nodes are deselected by clicking anywhere on the nodes grid. Hold and shift and press space. And go to add a text plus tool. In order to add a specific background shade to your text and the cursor, deselect the text node. Hold and shift and press space. And go to add a second background node. With the second background node selected, go to Inspector and choose the colour which you wish to apply to the screen that will appear behind your cursor and text. In this particular project I will keep the background colour as black. Now to add the text and background to the final clip, go to Disconnect Background 1 for Media Out 1 by clicking once on the line on the half closest to Media Out 1. Ensure that Background 1 is selected, hold Shift and press Space and go to add a merge tool. The background node should be connected by default to the yellow background arrow of merge 1. Select the grey box to the side of text 1 and connect to the foreground arrow above merge 1. Now select your second background node, hold shift and press space and go to add a second merge node. Again like with the first background node, background 2 should be connected to the background yellow arrow of Merge 2. And to have the text and the cursor appear in front of this, connect Merge 1 to the green foreground arrow of Merge 2. And finally connect the grey box of Merge 2 to the yellow arrow of Media Out 1. Go to select your text node, return to Inspector, underneath text, type in the message that you wish to have appear on screen. Adjust the size and colour if you wish also. And like with the cursor, we will use hashtag 00FF00 to make up the light green shade for our text also. Go to Font. To create a computerised text look, you can choose Lucida Console as an option for your font. To adjust the layout again, use the red centre box again for your text filter. To add a light blurred edge to your text, which is similar to the edges of your cursor, go to Shading, select Softness, and increase the X and Y values slightly. To create a style which is reflective of doing a close-up shot of text on a computer screen. You can also add some gentle vibrancy to the edges of your text by increasing Glow slightly. Here I will increase this to 0.08. Now return to your rectangle node. Go to Inspector and underneath Controls, adjust the center X and Y coordinates, X for the horizontal relocation or Y for a vertical adjustment, so that the cursor appears at the end of your message and alter the width and height dimensions so that these are similar to those of the characters which appear in your text, paying attention also to the similarities in spacing between each character and the cursor. The peak of my cursor in this example here is also similar to that of the zero in the message. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video was useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.